Title, quote, It always seems impossible until it is done. Nelson Mandela. Titles, Millersville and Temple Universities are part of the Pennsylvania Inclusive Higher Education Consortium. This consortium is made up of dozens of diverse and influential colleges and high schools that promote inclusive higher education. The consortium is part of a national network called Think College, which is dedicated to developing, expanding, and improving inclusive higher education options for people with intellectual disability that lead to meaningful employment opportunities. This film shows how inclusive higher education creates a sense of belonging for students like Missy, Curtis, Janet, and Fadia. Title, Opening Doors to College, a film by Dan Habib. Two swans float across a pond. Title, Millersville University, Millersville, Pennsylvania. In a classroom. From a professional and a human perspective, the most important thing I think for, for social workers is to understand well, what does that mean to you? But we also have to recognize that this is happening in this greater context of things where there's those social injustice, where people have been put in boxes, where sweeping generalizations about populations have been made. Does that make sense? Does that sound about right? A couple students smile. All right. One goes to her dorm with her roommate. This is your Facebook? Yeah. Oh my goodness. And good I think I saw your profile on my Facebook. You're beautiful in this picture. Thank you. Absolutely stunning. She wears a prom dress. Uh -oh. oh, someone's angry. <laughs> Later, she's in a common room. Hi, Missy. Uh -huh. How are you? Good. Missy sits at her laptop. What are we working on today? Missy Jackson. Millersville student, um, Integrated Studies. Homo, homo, homo. Mark oh, Masoner, student, I educational know. support coach. I have homework too. When we started this program, I had a professor call me on the phone and said, there is no place at this university for people with intellectual disability. Thomas J. Newville. I said, do you know that a little over 100 years ago, your peers said there's no place at this university for women? or people who are African-American, or people who are Latino, or people who have physical disabilities. We've been segregating people a long time, and it has not worked. Maybe we should try something else. In a lecture hall. Do you like that clean acoustic guitar sound? It's a thin texture, right? And it makes- Director of Integrated really Studies, Jan Bechtel. Integrated Studies is a fully inclusive initiative for students with intellectual and developmental disabilities to come and have a fully inclusive college experience. So that's everything from academic, social, residential, and personal well-being. A man speaks to Missy in an office. The program's been in existence since 2014. We started with one student, and now we have 16. What have you successfully overcome? In another of Missy's classes. Right? Bechtel. Integrated study students also work on vocational career exploration and building relationships. So it helps them grow as individuals and also in terms of their career and their future. They're admitted as full-time non-degree seeking students. They receive a university approved certificate. It's a meaningful credential and it's modeled right after our own Millersville University diploma. In another lecture hall. All right, excellent. Okay, what other call to action might there be? Yeah. The developmental upgrades of NFL equipment for player safety. Okay, the or the use of it. Yeah. Professor right. Victor Capici. So let's frame it this way: to mandate the use of more protective equipment in football. I'm, I'm rephrasing it a little bit. Does that make sense? Yeah. So Integrated that study might student be Curtis Ostrowski nods. Called action. Curtis. My aunt texted my mom about this program, and as soon as I got that message, I put my laptop down, rushed to the library, and got everything I needed to apply. Theo Brady. When people say college is not for students with intellectual disability, then you're gonna continue to oppress. Adjunct professor, disability studies. We gotta be very intentional about basic civil rights. Everyone needs an opportunity to participate. We need to open doors instead of close doors. That means a little bit more investment of your time as a professor. That's what we do with any student. Missy opens the door. In the Deep South, white America oppressed black America. In class. Separate schools. 
separate classrooms. She listens with other students. You have those kind of traditions and customs that you think it's okay because you see it every day, you got used to it. But all along, it was oppressive. And that's the same thing happened today with disability. She walks down a hall. Because I was in class again, that not homework. None. She reads a note on a door. Oh, I just like, I'm cooking, 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 Bechtel. Missy has, in her time here so far, developed a great deal in her self-advocacy. When she first came, she was really reluctant to talk. There were some students on campus that would call her names and things, and I, I think that made her go more inward. Professor Onik Arianga. Now, Missy has a bit of challenges speaking, but that should not detract from the fact that she has a mind of her own. She can try as difficult as it is to express herself. There's nothing more important than bringing a perspective of the world based of your location in society. In a gym, Curtis walks on a treadmill. Ostrowski is a very, very brilliant person. When they got out of his shell, Ostrowski became one of the most uh, vocal students in the classroom. Title. Curtis drops in to see his former professor, Onek Arianga, during office hours. Hey. Come in, come in. How are you? Good, how are you? Good, thank you very much. Yeah, registration is coming. Have you decided on courses you'll be taking? I, I picked, so I picked oh. out one so far. Uh, which one is that? Psychology. Psychology. Ah, yeah. oh, okay. Have you spoken with the professor? Uh, no, not yet. Find time, talk to the professor. I'm definitely coming back here. <laughs> anytime, man, anytime. I'll always love to see you. Man, I, I'll, as I was walking down the hall, I was yeah. like, oh, man, I'm seeing own that. Because you had confidence in me. You remember what I told you earlier? Anything that you want to do, you can do it. Do not let anybody tell you that you can't. In this world, it's the effort that you put into yeah. something, not what people tell you. Uh, think of how we could have lost that voice, that prominent voice. Not only is Curtis Ostrowski a better person, his classmate became better students as well. Title, quote, knowing what must be done does away with fear. Rosa Parks. People walk on another campus marked with Temple University flags, red with a white tee. Title, Temple University, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Two young women walk in a hall. I know she did, wanted to do today because she couldn't do Wednesday. Okay, so In class. Start. There's a lot of vernacular movement styles in this. Moves of the people. Moves that are done in communities, that are done in homes. Janet Caesar, student, leadership and parties. career studies. I told my sister I wanted to come to college. And she was like, really? You really sure you want to come to college? Because it's hard. I was like, yeah, I think I can do it. She was like, I believe you can do it, too. The other young woman, student and educational coach Olivia Quinn, sits by Janet listening to dance professor Rhonda Moore. Players took all of those moves and brought them into their acts, the comics, the singers, dancers. He's dipping back to all the things that they were watching on TV from the past. So let's move the chairs. You all seem so lively. She rolls her eyes. One, Once they do move two, the chairs, she leads three, them in clapping as they step four, back. Then they form pairs and clap each other's hands. Janet and Olivia good, do it together. Almost good, five, five, six, here we go. They all step forward and clap side to side. They do the same stepping back. Janet. They sent me a letter and they was like, congratulations, Miss James C.C., you got into the University. Now I'm jumping for joy, crying and everything. And I told my sister, I got into Temple University. And she came home almost cried. The class keeps dancing. Why not? Why not? I love it, actually, here <laughs> at Temple. I'm making all these new friends. 
I always want to experience to see what it's like, what people does here. Her sister, Adina Holmes. She's made new friends here. She's gotten much more dedicated about studying and she she's really grown. Program director, oh, Linda Miller. Good. Leadership and Career Studies is a program for students who have intellectual disabilities and or on the autism spectrum. It's a four-year program here at Temple University, and students are fully engaged in this vibrant urban campus. They take undergraduate classes with other students. They are members of student organizations and really are involved in the full spectrum of activities here on campus. Coordinator Titania Bodie. Some of the classes that our students have expressed interest in are classes like criminal justice, um, political science. There's a lot of history courses that have been taken. Uh, in Janet's case, she's uh, really into the arts. They also work with a coach who's an undergraduate student who lives on or off campus who provides both academic and social supports. Janet. Well, I have an intellectual disability, but even though I still have a little delay, I'm still normal just like everybody else. I'm proud that I am who I am. With mentor Kylie Billy. Did you register for classes for next semester? I sure did. I know I wanted to take criminal justice, then I would take Miller. Leadership and career studies is an opportunity for them to develop mm -hmm. their career aspirations. There are many opportunities for them to do internships, to uh, do job discovery, with the whole goal of having people have a integrated competitive job when they're done with the program. Janet and Kylie enter a building, then escort children into a room. Janet. And I'm in a pre-K class. A teacher watches. I work with four-year-olds. They like to run around. They be busy, but they're very sweet and they fun. They'll call me Miss Miss Janet. They work with kids at a table. Some of them have trouble writing letters or numbers, and I kind of help them with that. With a boy who holds a marker. Want to make a circle? Want some circles? He lets her have the marker. So you do a circle like this. You want a small? She gives it back. See how you do a circle? Okay, now you're messing me up. How? Uh, she's not trying to mess him up. She's trying to help him. Janet. By me being in college, I'm preparing them, letting them know, okay, it's okay to come to college. It's okay to be scared to want to do so, because <laughs> I was scared when I first came, so it's okay. We all stand and dance. <laughs> the girl demonstrates for Janet. Miller. We've had students who liked uh, security, so they've worked at Temple Police. Someone was interested in uh, being a seamstress, so they worked in our theater department. So it's the full range. Janet walks with the girl to the end of a hallway, and they walk outside. Janet. And it would land me more jobs because I had a class with child development, and I'm good with kids. Since I did my internship, it kind of put me more further in my career. They run together. Adina. My long-term hopes and goals for Janet were for her to be working in a field that she's always going to be happy and something that she's really passionate about and working towards self-sufficiency. And she's really been doing an excellent job at that thus far. So where she won't be needing, needing the big sister much longer, so, but I'm proud of her. The kids play on a play structure with the Philadelphia skyline in the background. Title, quote, it is not our differences that divide us. It is our inability to recognize, accept, and celebrate those differences, Audrey Lord. Back at Millersville, Capici leads a small class, including Curtis. All right, so let's figure out who's on the panel so we can move forward. Who's, who's on the panel? Our girl. All right, excellent. Curtis and, changes seats. All right, who's, who's, who do we have first here today? Now, what if I told you that you can make a little extra money on, you know, a small streaming site called YouTube? An average user makes approximately 2 to $3 for both kinds of advertisements per 1,000 views. It is definitely possible to make more than that, though, with the prime success story being PewDiePie. This YouTube powerhouse made over $12 million from YouTube ads in 2017. Anybody ready? Yes, sir. Sure. Um, 
You were loud, but in a good way. You projected yourself well, I guess. Curtis. You had a great intro, uh, really cool topic, considering my sister's trying to get into YouTube. So it was very informational, um, just well done. Later. As of September 11th, 2001, the original mission of the Chemical Corps was to protect the forest, was expanded to a new role with Homeland Security. Curtis. That snap at the end just, like, killed the mood. Later, he walks through a building. Whenever I meet someone new, I feel like, for me, it's important to, like, share my balance issue with them. Out in the snow. I got to be careful, because my uh, shoes don't have the best traction. He crosses a wet parking lot. That I, like, stumble or fall down a lot. He walks on another paved area by a building with a clock tower as light snow falls. I can't have alcohol, which I'm, I'm fine with because at least I don't get a beer belly, um, so. In better weather, Missy walks with two young men. I going to go alcohol. In a cafeteria, some young women chat with Missy as she sits with them. Um, can go clean, could get quiet, or get quiet, go call. So I, 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 I can't call. So um, how can go clean, 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 get quiet, or and go call. She reads in a common room. Curtis walks to a building. This. This one guy in high school, he just said, dude, are you drunk or something? And I mean, I try to ignore it, but inside it kills you. Bechtel. On the face of it, you would meet Curtis and he's quite articulate and thoughtful. And people would question, why would he choose integrated studies? rather than pursuing a regular degree with supports. There's an invisible disability that you may not be aware of that kind of impacts um, his thought process and the way that he approaches things and his ability to organize things. We help them build capacity to take them in the direction they want to go, whether it's a typical degree or whether it is remaining with integrated studies and pursuing their career. Curtis. At the very up, beginning last semester, Curtis. I really didn't Good, step out of my shell too much, but this year I feel like I have somewhat more people I can go and talk to. And Curtis sits eating with Missy and a couple other young women. I want them to play like Travis Scott's new album. <laughs> Yes, that's a great album. What's your favorite song? Um, Sickle. Where it does the transition yeah. for like, it's like two different songs in one. That, that first beat change is life changing. Yeah. I like, uh, I like the one with 21 Savage. Oh. NC-17. That's what it's called? Yeah. What are you doing this weekend? You doing anything fun? I'm working on Sunday. He points. Right there. Catering? Yeah. I had a 13 hour shift on Saturday. So one of the biggest challenges that many students face is the cost of college. Bechtel. Students in integrated studies are required to have a job by the end of the second semester because we really feel that campus employment is a good way to get their feet wet. Many of them have never had a job. Newville. There's some recent data that indicates that people with intellectual disability who have not attended an inclusive post-secondary ed initiative are employed at the rate of 17%. Curtis signs in at a reception desk. Students who have graduated from our initiative are employed at the rate of 85%. Curtis looks through library shelves. My manager gives me a list of books that I have to find and bring back to the front desk for other people to check out. He looks at books on a cart. It's a little, little stressful on my eyes because I'm a big dude and sometimes the books are like way down here. Kneeling, he checks a bottom shelf. We try to keep it 
Newville. So that folks can come here if they want to, no matter what their financial resources are. And we have been uh, vigorously building a scholarship fund. Mark sits with Missy. Go to Dr. Prady's class. Let's look at your other class. They stare at her laptop. Oh, and right there. Pre-colonial Africa. Bechtel. Each student has an educational support coach, one or more. Maybe you need to ask Coaches uh, are undergraduate students and also graduate students that work with them in support, okay. academics, career exploration, building relationships, independent living. And so the role of the coach is to kind of help model the role of a student, then to help students to advocate and develop that confidence to advocate. Okay. I have a 15-page paper oh, that I have to write for one of my classes. Oh, God. <laughs> so you can, you can help me write it. I'm um, not okay. <laughs> Professor Kathleen M. Walsh. So I want you to take 30 seconds to make some notes about one thing that you did during your break. Social work class or even in the last couple days, that celebrated your strengths. And I know that this is hard. Missy looks up at her. Because it's really hard to say nice things about ourselves. I'm waiting for my mom and dad, just like you. Student Alaya Hall who makes Missy laugh. Uh, yeah, they do a lot for me, so I'm always it's great to have them. My I'm grateful for my sister and brother, too. Nothing will be, nothing TV. Um, oh, oh, hi. Uh, Walsh joins her. What are some of your strengths? Oh, uh, wait, uh. Can I tell you what I see? Yeah. Well, one of my favorite things about you is that you are always here and you're always on time and early. Walsh crouches in front of her. And you are always a part of the conversation. Like, you're always, I know that you are hearing me. Uh, it's really, I think it's such an important thing. She stands. When we're talking about the capacity to tackle injustice, engage in conversations about difference, we also have to be able to engage in conversations about similarities. What brings us joy? What unifies us rather than what divides us? And it leads us to empowerment where we are trying Bechtel. to... One of the first things we do with students when they're admitted to integrated studies is person-centered planning, and that is in the form of a path. A large mind map hangs on her dorm wall. And so they have, you have like your dreams and your goals, your first steps. Yeah. And... Bechtel. And so we bring all the family and anyone who is significant them together, and then we kind of plan out what their hopes and dreams are and how we can contribute to that with their time at Millersville. Missy's roommate scrolls on her phone. So these girls, I know, I know two of them. That's me in this photo when I was uh, in dance. I'm a dancer. If I have a segregated class on how to take care of your room, they're not going to listen to me. Bechtel. But if they live with a roommate and they see how their roommate takes care of their room or doesn't take care of their room, that's where the learning takes place. Capici lectures Your as point Curtis about, listens. About changing direction going from... The we have a long history of designing services for people with intellectual disability that are separate from. Newville. You'll find some campuses that have designed specific classes just for the student with an intellectual disability. It's well-meaning, it's well-intentioned, it's not gonna work out well. Missy smiles in her class. You simply cannot prepare someone to live in the ordinary world by having them in a separate setting. It only prepares them for the unordinary. Curtis. I don't like the e online class so much. Can you sign up for your classes next semester yet? They sit in a dining area. Um, Do I have it? I don't know what I'm going to do. Do you have a boyfriend? Yeah. I mean, we were friends before we did anything. So I've known him for nine years. Damn. <laughs> we're dating and seeing where it goes. Many will ask why college is so critical for students with disabilities, particularly students in integrated studies with intellectual disabilities. And I would say that Bechtel. why should they not have the opportunity to develop as human beings and uh, experiment with different careers and figuring out who they are and building relationships like typical peers do. He smiles with some other people. Title, quote, education is not preparation for life. Education is life itself. John Dewey. 
At Temple, Gregory M. Anderson. The Leadership and Career Studies program fits in multiple ways into the mission of the College of Education. College of Education Dean. We have a social justice mission and a set of values that's based on uh, supporting students uh, with the principles of inclusion, really driving what we do. We think it's emblematic of an inclusion mission that isn't just based on things that we normally associate with inclusion, like race or ethnicity or class, but recognizing the true diversity of our humanity. Two young women walk together. I am a freshman, and I'm so glad to have this. I'm so, I thought I never get into college to have this opportunity to get in, and I was so excited. To have to go to have classes as, as, as the same as other students and stuff. Fudia Kameka. Get like us, we, we don't want to get in stuff like that. And I thought that I wouldn't get in, but I did. They sit with others. I was happy, excited, just to get to experience like other kids and stuff, to have like a like a like a college life, I hang out with my friends, and go to football game, the whole coming game and stuff. I did all that. She laughs with them. In high school, I have to be with a teacher all the time and stuff, so it was not like any dependent there. And my mom always got to make sure that I'm there and taking care of and stuff. I adopted Fidia when she was six. I brought her home from Freetown, Sierra Leone. Her mother, Liz Meyer. All the specialists told me that she was very bright and that the learning piece would probably click in. It was just her lack of exposure, lack of nutrition, all those kind of things. Then around 11 or so, I decided to have a psych ed eval, um, and it showed what I thought to be an intellectual disability. Fadia is shown in a photo as a young girl. Fadia's life in Sierra Leone was very traumatic. She was there during um, Civil War. She lost her father. She came home with severe malnutrition. She was six and she was the size of about a two or three year old. The reason we're here at Temple is she stood out in her high school. Her teacher said to me, Liz, you've, you've got to apply for this program. And I was kind of, I didn't understand. I said, how is that going to work? She was more nervous than I was. Fudia. A, no, a nervous, worry mom. <laughs> Title, Fudia's Circle of Support Meeting with Fellow yeah, Temple Students, alone. College is not like high school. It's totally different. Like, it's not, they don't really have much drama. There's no fighting there. It's, it's more like independent. We had said... In the meeting. That you had a presentation to finish mm -hmm. and your homework to finish. Yep. So did you finish all that? Yes, I did. Awesome. Just like talking like one up and have, having a civilized conversation. Miller. There's always one person who's there for the students to, to be supportive to the student, um, as well as this team approach based on a circle of support. Maybe it was that one yeah. that you guys were talking about. No, thank you. The idea is that so, the student is really learning how to manage so his or her own supports, which is so important in the adult world because you really need to know what support you need in order to get a quality of life. Have then, your meeting for your internship? Yeah, I did. It was oh. yesterday. Yeah, it was good. Good? I told her that I'm going to do childcare the most. We want to be invisible, that students are just seen as any other student on Temple University's campus. So what are your plans with or without your coaches coming up on campus? I'm going to be in an outdoor club. Okay. Well, I was going to be in an outdoor club okay. this year, too, but I think it was too late. Yeah, and the baking club. The coach types. Baking club. What other club are there I could join? Were you on the list? Liz. Well, I think I've just gotten more comfortable that there's enough scaffolding to hold her up. Student like Moira Smith mm -hmm. walked yeah, with Fidia to the student center. The classwork is a little bit hard. I had two of them, leadership communication and interpersonal communication. The chapter was like hard and stuff. I got like a lot of reading, a lot of writing. At a table. He said he's like um like like, like a speed, like sl slidding. Like, More like of a checklist slip, she's reading. Slipping. Slip and sl I don't I don't even drive at all right now. I, 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 I want to no, not even. No? Mm, you don't I, want to? I do want to. My, my mom don't think me uh, she don't think driving because she don't think um I should drive because it's not really it's not really worth driving and stuff. You live in a city and stuff, you live, live close to everything to walk. In high school, the expectations were less than they are now. And I think she's risen to the occasion. In class. Specifically thinking about the dance, 
How old were the people who created the first hip hop dances? Guest presenter, dance experience class, Mark Metal Wong. They were like 11 years old, 10, 11, 12 years old. Mm. That even though it was invented by like these literal children, it has it really quickly evolved into a very complicated, very uh, artistically and aesthetically deep art. Video. Going to classes with other kids is fun. Um, you get to learn different things and stuff. And I, I like to dance. Why? Why did hip hop happen? It was probably like a social like movement. Yeah, it definitely was a social like, movement. Like a rebellion. I think like the most basic thing that hip hop is expressing is I am here and I'm alive and I'm a person. And for a 10 year old living in the Bronx where like nobody thinks that you are ever going to grow up to be anything, to say that and express that is a very, very important thing. Pudi is very passionate She's about like, dance. Bodhi. I foresee her possibly participating in an internship here on campus where she's engaged with the film, media, and uh, dance department. Again, to add a little bit of the Latin American influence, hip twist on the back step. Wong leads the class. Liz. This is only her freshman year. I can't believe how quickly it's gone. And I've seen actually an increase in her reading ability. She and Moira try to follow Wong's next steps. Look, I didn't think college was possible for Fidia, and here she is. So I don't say never or no to anything. Anderson. Having students with disabilities in classes has focused our faculty on seeing the true diversity of the learning experience and the true diversity of the student body. It's compelled our faculty to reflect on their practice. So it actually makes us better teachers, makes us better professors, makes us better scholars and researchers. Fidia. Something that I would do and get married and have a family of my own. I'm happy to be in college. I get that more independent. Wong breakdances. Yeah, I love it. After twisting upside down, he spins to his feet. Moira leads Fidia into clapping in a circle. Title, quote. I don't know where I'm going from here, but I promise it won't be boring. David Bowie. Missy applauds cheerleaders in a parade. Bechtel. So many people will dismiss students with disabilities. They'll say, just have them stay in high school till they're 21 in a life skills classroom and learn to brush your teeth 30,000 times. Like, that's going to change. She high fives people. Newville. They're making a thousand decisions a day about who to have lunch with, about how to dress, about should I go to class, about should I go to the party, about do I go to the football game. A group marches in unison. <laughs> Millersville president Daniel Wuba. We are supposed to educate all our citizens. And students with disabilities are part of our citizenry. So we have that moral imperative to educate them. He waves from a jeep in the parade. My own grandson is autistic. Missy waves. He's very bright. All he needs is the opportunity, and he can excel in anything he wants to do. Curtis. My parents give me a good dose of kick in the ass because they believe in me 100%, and sometimes I take that for granted. They smile in a photo. Mom. If you're watching this, oh, Dad, you believe in me so much, and I know it's stressful, but I appreciate it from the bottom of my heart. And ultimately, I want to make you proud of me. In another photo, Wuba hands Curtis a diploma cover saying Millersville University as they both wear caps and gowns. Braddy. Unfortunately, what we have learned from generation to generation is to not interact with people with disabilities. You know what I do? My How can you know me <laughs> if you don't interact with me? <laughs> Once we get a place of commonality, we start seeing each other as, as, as the same and not necessarily those people. That goes like, Nah, and angry. So I can hang out a good tacky. She goes out in the snow with another young woman. Go ahead. Go ahead. She throws a snowball. Hey! 
She bends down to make another as her target runs. She throws it at a young man coming outside, who bends down to make his own. They make more and fight. She chases her first target. They both throw snowballs at the camera. <laughs> Title, quote, once social change begins, it cannot be reversed. You cannot uneducate the person who has learned to read. You cannot humiliate the person who feels pride. You cannot oppress the people who are not afraid anymore, Cesar Chavez. Titles, directed and produced by Dan Habib. Executive producers, Jan Bechtel, Anne-Marie Licata, Thomas Newville. Edited by James Rutenbeck. This film was supported by the Pennsylvania Inclusive Higher Education Consortium, which is funded by the U.S. Department of Education through the acquisition of a transition and post-secondary programs for students with intellectual disabilities, TPSID, grant. Produced in collaboration with Millersville University and Institute on Disability, UCED, University of New Hampshire. More information, www.millersville.edu slash integrated studies www.temple.edu slash Institute on Disabilities www.pihec.com Copyright 2020, Millersville University